the time being 5 36 p.m on tuesday march 21st 2023 i call to order the public meeting of the rentham school committee my name is veronica gonzalez and i am the chair of the rentham school committee i'm joined by the other members of the rentham school committee and superintendent alan cameron we're meeting in the roderick raymond library of the roderick elementary school the meeting is being live streamed on the district's youtube channel and recorded the recording will also be posted on the district's website. Okay, to begin our meeting um, tonight, we lost our uh, regional director of food services, Shelly Bernardini, and unexpectedly um, a few weeks ago. And we uh, wanted to recognize her and thank her uh, for her service and her time in Rentham, uh, as well as Plainville, Norfolk, and the KP uh, district. You know, she was a mom to two girls. She attended our meeting just in January. She, um, I believe also was hired during COVID um, and put a lot of hard work and effort into our district. Um, so if you would please join me for a quick um, moment of silence in, in honor of Shelley Bernadine. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we we'll begin our meeting this evening with public comment. Uh, members of the public are uh, welcome to speak to the school committee for up to three minutes about any agenda or non-agenda item related to the responsibilities of the school committee. If you could raise your hand and you'll take a spot at the podium, please state your name and your address before speaking. Would anybody like to make a public comment this evening? Okay. Thank you. All right, our next, next item on our agenda this evening is the approval of our meeting minutes from February 15th meeting. Uh, I saw an email, Gray, for the change of name for um, the finance committee. I noticed that, and so I believe that was updated. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody, anybody like to make a motion to approve the minutes? I have a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Second. Any comments? Okay, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Okay, actually, you will stay, right? Aye. Oh, okay, all right, okay. All right, thank you. <laughs> um, next, we have an acceptance of an, a donation. Um, the Brentham Public Schools received a $5,000 donation from the John D. Langley Foundation. 2500 for the Delaney School and 2500 for the Roderick School. Um, and as I understand, the Langley Foundation is based out of Walpole. Uh, I believe that our teacher, uh, Mrs. Langley Hainer, is affiliated with the foundation. And the donation was given in honor of Paul Lazaro, who's the father to um, Mrs. Lazaro, the school counselor for the Roderick School. And um, Paul Lazaro also has a grandson in the Rentham Public Schools. So there's a lot of ties there. Um, a grandchild. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, and Mr. Lazaro, Paul Lazaro passed away in December. Um, the, and also I looked up the, the Langley Foundation and um, their goal is to provide remedial and enrichment opportunities to children in need. So their donation was very kind and generous to the Rentham Public Schools. So just want to give a little background on that. So would one of you like to make a motion to approve? Make a motion to approve. I'll second it. Okay. Any further comments? Oh, it's really very generous. Very generous and kind, yes. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Extension. Great, thank you. Moving right along, we have the school committee budget. Uh, so the presentation was was made last meeting, and as Alan indicated in our um, packet for this tonight's meeting, nothing has changed. Um, I'm going to open it up for conversation. I think right off. If there's anything? No. Do we want to share the presentation again? Whatever, okay. whatever you like. The slides are they're available online now, right? Are they available online? No. But they, they will be. Once we've yeah, what we do is 
Yeah, yeah what we, we do, do is we vote it typically the school committee votes to approve it and then it, we put it online. That's right. No? The only question I, I did have one question, which is I understand that town enters into a three year contract for energy. So we will not be getting a reduction that that's a great question. I don't know. Uh, Shannon, do you have any information on that? Uh, not any updated information, but I do know what Chad signed was a separate year contract. Okay. I don't know if he'll be able to update that now that energy rates are possibly going down. Of course, I would say mm. the likelihood is less than 50% that he would be able to update mm. those. But it's maybe still possible because they haven't technically kicked in yet. So maybe there is some type of backup cost. I don't know though because that is something to talk about. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, that's a great question. Thank you. Yeah. That is a very good question. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 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 So it's, uh, we can choose, we'd like to approve the budget. The difference, what we're, what we're looking for for this year is a 4.93 increase. Um, how would you all like to proceed? I heard you looking at the last meeting. I want you to make the most of it. This is it. I want you make it all the money. I, mean, I personally, I, okay, I'd like to make a motion to approve the budget. <laughs> I'll second. So I'll open it up for comment and, and uh, if anything else. I would just <laughs> like to thank Greg for at least two years of official, official duties on the finance committee. As well as an additional year before that, before my time of viewing budgets and the very detailed analysis of that. And so, thank you for all of that work. Thank you. Well, after three years, I'm finally starting to get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks to Shannon and Alan for answering all my questions. And Phil, honestly, it's been really interesting. And it's been great to be able to really get a dive into it and get comfortable with it. and be able to walk away knowing that it's in such great hands and so well taken care of. It feels great. So. Thank you. Good. All right. All those in favor of approving the FY24 school committee budget? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, next up is the school calendar. So the school calendar we reviewed last meeting and there were a few changes i think from yes. last month's meeting to this month's meeting That's right. and that was based on um i believe some town elections and are the other town calendars out now yes okay yes they are um okay so let's take a look here so it's, the calendar is largely the same there are a few changes that we made um, based on the elections, as you have mentioned. Yep. So um, the you know the start of school; those days are the same, uh, with August thirtieth being the start day. Um, we have uh, we've moved some of the professional development days around to avoid the October uh, special town election on the twenty fourth, and then. Um, the primary on March 5th. And because of those two dates, we had to move a few of the early release professional days that we had blocked in close to those dates around. Mm -hmm. So now um, we think that we think this calendar is, is pretty, pretty mm -hmm. well developed. Um, it spaces out professional development throughout the year. Um, you know, it gets, <laughs> us, uh, gets us out of school with no snow days. Uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Maloney. <laughs> 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 this has been a sad year for her with no snow days um, on uh, June 12th, which is which is always a very, it's a nice That's nice great. time to get out. So yep. um, I'm happy to answer any questions. You can see on the on your on the bottom uh, right hand corner, um, we have the total number of days of the week that we're in school, and um, we tried to align, we tried to place the early dismissal days so that we would have, you know, about the same number of full days for each day of the week. That's important for special subjects because right. they land on certain days. So um, we try to be you know, aware of that. We made the, the calendar. Um, do you know when Juneteenth is next year? Uh, it's on June 19th. It always is. Yeah. So oh, I, thought the, it, I thought it was. Uh, 
it's on a weekend. fluctuated. Oh, 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 that's what it was then. So yeah. it'll be on if we have that many snow days. Sure. It would yeah. be we have to go until June twentieth with uh, five days of five school days. Gotcha. Okay. So I have a, a question about it. Do we do a motion on everything before you said? Um, yeah, let's make a motion first. I'll make a motion. <laughs> Second. I'll open it up for conversation. So just an idea. Okay. And this isn't changing yeah. the calendar, I promise. But no, we have plenty of time to change. So. Uh, no, 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 no. It's not a, all about that. <laughs> but being on the Run Them 350 committee, we made a mistake two years ago when we looked at the calendar to try to book the Grand Parade. Well, we unfortunately scheduled it on Rosh Hashanah. And it was just trying to cross check the different calendars. It wasn't on my phone calendar. It wasn't on the town calendar. It's not on the school calendar. So as an idea, would we consider maybe taking the very important dates that we don't necessarily have off, but that the community as a whole could be more aware of like Rosh Hashanah and Kippur, whatever other type of the bigger ones that maybe Franklin has off, rent them to, and just a different color. And maybe so that when we do look at the school calendar, you know, as you get used to it, you maybe become more aware. Yeah, I, from, from my perspective, I think we discussed, we talked about that before, I think it's a great idea. Um, we do that internally. Yeah. Um, Sumita Stocking uh, sends the two-month, um, mm -hmm. you know, important holidays for the month so that people are aware mm -hmm. um, for the kids. For example, uh, with Ramadan coming up, we're going to have students who are fasting. Exactly. And we need to be aware of that so we you know, make sure we provide them a, a good environment to learn while they're yeah. fasting. Um, so so I, I think it's great. We do it internally. and. Um, you know, I don't know, I have to see, see how the logistically would work on this calendar, but yeah. I think having some kind of a calendar with that notice would be just like really a, nice to have. Color, I was looking at it, there's maybe not enough room at the bottom of it. You want it to keep it a one pager. Yeah. You don't want it to suddenly become too complicated where we can't read the calendar. But if it's just, I'm sure you all can think about it if you do it, if you don't do it. But I have to say that as somebody personally who doesn't practice any religion, I don't, I don't know the dates, you know, and it'd be really helpful. We send out a list at the beginning of the year for the teachers with all holidays, just so when you're planning projects or special events and things like that, so that they're yeah. mindful. Maybe that list could be. Right, maybe that's what maybe the list you know, list out on the website. Yeah. Or something. Yeah, well, that would so be the, very helpful. Yeah, yeah. I, I, like birthday I parties, you you want to make sure that you're mindful. Right. Yeah. Or, just different events. Just one more color on this. <laughs> just a little explanation as to what that celebration means. Is it a celebration of mourning? Is it a celebration of celebrating? In a certain way, it kind of keeps the community at the same time in a really positive way. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, so it may not be a part of this calendar, but but I think that having some kind of resource like that would be something that we can print out, put on our fridge, the same as like yeah. the PTO calendar. I think we the school, do, and it says it all there with everything. Okay, the great. Yeah. So we yeah. The school lunch calendar also sometimes has yes. some things like that on there, so that's true. another opportunity, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 that's. Advice so really are we voting on the calendar or we can, still, or are you still working on it? I'm not working on it. Yes, I'm happy to work on it more if you have, if you have input. I'm just, only I'm just sort of surprised. This is remarkably, yes. yes. Yes, yes. I mean, six How tries is still a number of tries. <laughs> so, How many um, years have been doing these calendars? I know. Mm, this is my ninth. <laughs> many, many calendars. <laughs> I'm happy with the calendar i'd be happy to vote tonight i think gray already made a motion that's right uh okay so let's make a vote all those in favor aye. 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 aye opposed any abstentions okay we have a calendar right, thank you thank you okay next up is the discussion of a roderick building uh project subcommittee so this came up last month's meeting we discussed um in our school committee re review our self-evaluation we talked about making um, many more subcommittees, and uh, one of them that came up is the is the Roderick School um, Project Subcommittee based out of the, the MSBA um, project. I think I'll just open it up to the converse, to conversation for the four of us right now and figure out if we want to do this now. I think my two cents might be to just wait until next month's meeting when we have a committee for the year, and we're going to be um 
deciding on who's on which committee anyway, and maybe we add that to the list mm -hmm. for next month's meeting, and then two people can be designated as the liaisons for the for the Roderick School project. But um, that's a great idea. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing we have to do between now and yeah. No, unless we get a phone no. call. We did. I mean, we did. I spoke with um, MSBA last week. Very exciting that they reached out. Um, evidently, they sent uh, an email to our uh, point of contact, and uh, which who's Kevin Sweet, the town administrator, mm -hmm. and uh, I was CC'd on there, and MSBA assumed that he would send it to me since I was CC'd on there, and he assumed that they included me since I was CC'd on there. Oh. So that's why um, we didn't have any notice. But uh, now we now we know we're all on the same page. We have our point person with MSBA, which is great, and okay. she's going to um, schedule a meeting for some town officials, I'm still unsure exactly who, in May. And that's when we're going to really, as she told me, I better clear my desk because it's going to be <laughs> quite a bit of work. Um, but that's when we'll find out all the specifics. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, it was very exciting to, to talk to them. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's been a while. Yes. Um, okay, so should we just table that for now? And then next month's meeting, the new crew will mm -hmm. decide or make sure that that's added on to the, the list of different committees to be on. Okay, great. All right, we're moving on to new business. Um, so we have the BICO Collaborative Agreement. And Alan, I think I'm gonna ask sure. you to speak to this a little yes. bit. Yes, so good. every year, I think every year, so, so BICO Bi Collaborative is, is a uh, special education collaborative that we belong to along among the other towns of the school districts. And we um, use them to help educate some of our students who are low incidence here in the district and we can't meet their needs uh, here. And we can send them there and they'll be in a great learning environment with uh, peers and they provide the services for them there. Uh, we pay tuition, but it's much more uh, reasonable. It's a nonprofit, so it's a much more uh, cost-effective way mm -hmm. to support those students and send them to private school. Um, and so part of the responsibility of being in a collaborative is we have to, every year the school committee has to vote on the agreement to belong, continue to belong to the collaborative. Um, so there are a few changes to the BICO collaborative agreement this year, uh, three in particular. First, we, uh, we are adding CECONC uh, to, the, to BICO. Uh, two, um, you can see each board member shall be entitled to one vote on behalf of each appointed member district represented. So each school committee can send a representative to serve on the board. Um, you may send somebody who's not a superintendent, although everyone sends a superintendent. Um, and we get, um, you know, we get a, I don't really know how that's a change. because that's sort of our current practice. Um, and then three, um, so people want to come in or people want to leave BICO. So mm -hmm. this is language around that process on how we can actually kind of manage that process in case somebody, uh, we need to end our relationship with someone or if BICO needs to, needs to discontinue because it's not financially viable anymore, right. which was something that we were worried about um, during the pandemic, yep. but we were able to really boost student enrollment and that problem has been solved now but just in case that ever comes up again we need language in there to have that available in case that's happened so that's been in there um and then the rest um you know really the rest of the stuff is pretty much just consistent with what we do in bike already so for the guys at seaconk in there and then the, how they kind of will become a member of the collaborative and the reason why they want to become a member of the collaborative is uh, they have a lot of FICO takes students who are either in the collaborative or they also take students from outside of the collaborative and they charge more for students from outside of the collaborative. Mm -hmm. And Seacock has a number of students who are in FICO, so they want to have be members so they get the lower tuition rate. And they've been applying for a long time. Um, and now we are welcoming, we'd like to welcome them in. Okay. And the rest of the agreement is basically the same. Maybe it was just wording, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, 
Gray, would you like to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion. <laughs> so I'll open it up for discussion. If there are any questions? All right, we'll vote. Um, all those in favor to approve the BICO Collaborative Agreement? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. All right, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I was going to talk. Yep. All right. So, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, so uh, FY23 uh, update, um, yeah. Shannon and I are happy to uh, talk with you about where we are with our current um, budget. Shannon, do you uh, want to go to the mic? Um, we sent you <laughs> the plan. We sent you the plan for how we're um, kind of winding down uh, this fiscal year. Um, you know, broadly speaking, things are, are pretty much on target for a uh, positive ending uh, to the year. Uh, but we're happy to answer any any specific questions that you have about any of the individual line items. And Shan, do you have anything that you like um, to add? No, right before I came over though, I did look to see where we were kind of last year and the year before. And then I realized I can't compare to FY21 because we just had too much money that year yes. because that was the- A lot of COVID money. That COVID money. Um, yeah. But last year we're pretty much on target. We had given you our close the end of April last year, we were at 37, and I think we're at 341 right now. So we're pretty close. Um, maybe a little bit less come April. But that's the thing that means we're, yes. we're starting to budget a little bit more on, on point. And so with our additional funds as we get closer, we'll start to do pre-buys and things like that, and then we'll really know our closing number by the middle of May all spending will stop then. And so all's good on track for free kindergarten next year? Keep on yes. going? For next year, yeah. <laughs> good. I have no comments. Although, actually, do you want to make a motion first and then we'll open it up for comments? I'll make a motion to open up for comments. <laughs> <laughs> so any discussion around the FY23 uh, school committee budget update? Okay, and all those in favor of approving? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstention? Okay. Thank you, Shannon. Thanks, Shannon. It's easy enough. Um, okay, next up is a school choice vote. So every year um, we open up this discussion again um, on whether or not we allow students from other towns and school districts to attend the Rentham schools. Um, as far as I understand, I don't think Rentham has ever participated in school choice, no. um, but we do have to vote on it every year. So uh, why don't we first make a motion? Make a motion. Second. And I'll open it up for any discussion regarding school choice. My understanding from past discussions is that <clears throat> The cost to accept the students exceeds the reimbursement that we get, so that That's correct. the the financial uh, burden would fall to accept a school choice vote would fall on the taxpayers of Bentham. There does not seem to be a good argument that I've heard about why we should encumber the taxpayer in this town to allow others to send their children to this school, which I can understand why they want to. Yeah. Clearly. <clears throat> but I never it never made sense to me why we would accept that. The so the way in some uh, districts that have a low enrollment, if you've got let's say 10 or 11 kids in a class, you have to run that class anyway. So you can school choice in some students and they'll get the five thousand dollar per per student. Mm -hmm. So that'll increase and so if you enroll enough kids go to twenty five kids a class, they work for you. With um, for us, um, with our class sizes, it really, it would. It would overpopulate our classes. I would, I would recommend yeah. it would not be financially advantageous for us. It would be potentially problematic with the class size. So. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Were you going to say something? Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Um, all those in favor well, then? I just oh, want sorry. to make sure that what we're voting on before we say what we're in favor. Okay. Of, so smart. Yes. So that, that's what I'm going to say. So. All those in favor of 
Rentham not participating in school choice for the 2023-2024 school year? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Great. Okay. Sorry, I'm not used to looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> it's your last video. Very painful. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very painful experience. <laughs> She's so happy if she was staying and staying around another year, she'd be like, "Can we get away from those U-shaped tables that I've been asking for for two years?" And she's going to stick me across from that guy. <laughs> All right, moving on. Our uh, next uh, topic we need. So I'm, I've added a new um, piece to our agenda because, based on our um, review of ourselves from last month's meeting. Something that was brought up, um, Phil, I think, was the one who mentioned it, was maybe being able to discuss different parts of our policy in meet, in open meeting, um, because as we all know, we can't congregate and have these discussions outside of public meeting. So if it's on the agenda, then we can engage in the conversation. And it doesn't mean that we're going to be necessarily altering or changing anything, but just being able to have an open dialogue um, about the different parts of our policy. Okay. So the one that, that we have up tonight is the bullying and cyberbullying prevention policy. It's JS in the policy book. Um, Alan had provided a link for us to review it. And I guess I'll just open the floor up if we wanted to just jump in and share your thoughts. And we'll go from there since we're new to this part of the meeting. So I'll make a motion. There's no motion to oh, be no made. Motion. Good sure. job. Give her a little bit of power and see if right yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so I guess, I mean, it would be helpful to understand the process of what happens when there is, an, a, a, you know, um, say a child goes home and says, I'm getting, I'm getting tossed around the schoolyard or somebody's constantly badgering me or you know, these incidents are happening at school and the parent calls in somebody, I'm sure very angrily and screaming and yelling about what's happening with the family yes. and, and the child in school. What then, so like, what, what is the specific act, like as implemented, what would be the thing that would happen? Sure, that's a great question. Um, would, would you two mind uh, fielding that? I think that sure. you're probably... Yeah. Um, so typically what will happen is we'll, we'll talk to the parent and, um, kind of determine past events, determine, you know, past history. Sometimes it can be recent history. Sometimes it can be, you know, longer than, you know, six months or a year. Um, and if need be, we do a, a formal bullying investigation plan. Um, and that involves. It's kind of multifaceted, but that involves uh, talking to potential witnesses that could be staff or students. Um, that also involves um, coming up, you know, writing a summary, and then having another um, peer, typically it's like an assistant principal or another principal, review that. And then we talk to the parent uh, again to determine if that constitutes as bullying or not. Um, and then after that determination, there is some. Um, you know, discipline procedure on the you know, uh, alleged aggressor. That's it. Okay. And um, thank you, Kevin. And to, yeah. to meet their specific uh, criteria for it to be defined as, as bullying. Um, so it needs to be targeted. It needs to happen, you know, m more often than once. It can't be a singular incident. Mm -hmm. That's an inappropriate behavior. And there'll still be a consequence for that. Um, uh, and we'll still go through a, a process similar to what Kevin described. But if we see that pattern of targeted behavior, um, that's when um, it would qualify as, as bullying. Category. And yeah, yeah. and it, it would still, it wouldn't really, it, it would increase the um, aspects of the response. It might, intend, it might make for a longer, more significant consequence for the students. Uh, more close involvement with the mental health team to try to figure out how to support the student and the family. Um, fortunately, we don't have, we get lots of, of notices about incidents that happen with students. 
Um, and so the principals are investigating and Laura are investigating uh, frequently. Um, but typically, almost always, they are not targeted at a, with one student or a group of students targeting a, a, another student repeatedly. More often than not, it's, it's an individual incident that's mm -hmm. inappropriate. Um, and of course, we have a, you know, our goal is to help the students learn from the process. So we have an, an educational approach to, to our discipline process. Um, we want the students to learn that this, what happened was inappropriate, why it's inappropriate, and that it can't happen again. So it's not just a consequence that happened. There's an educational piece too. And our mental health team is almost always involved in trying to help the students understand why that it was inappropriate, what some of the things they could do if they're in that situation again, so they wouldn't be there mm -hmm. another time. Now, what about the cyberbullying? I was just going to ask that Because that's that like too. a fine line of like it outside is. the school. Yep. Exactly. So um, things, that, things that happen outside of school, but then impact school are still our responsibility to address. So we still do investigate those things. Um, we oftentimes work with the, SO, the school resource officer and get that person involved. Um, you know, if it's something that happens um, online, particularly if it's some kind of a, of a threat or some kind of a, we've had some incidents with some, some concerning things that students would write or repost online. Um, and we would get the yes, school resource officer involved with that. Um, but if it, if it's just another example of, of, of students writing inappropriate things or happening after school, we handle it the same way. We still bring the students in. We still go through the investigation. Ideally, we have access to what was written so we can see it. And and that would, of course, thing. require that would require somebody informing you, though. Yes. Because it's not happening at the school. That's right. Yeah. So. But which is tough. So we have to get right. we have to have that. But then on the flip side, we oftentimes do have people informing us and showing us this is what was written. So we actually have the evidence right there, which makes the investigation a lot mm -hmm. easier. Which I think is just important to note. I know I've had parents who said, I read something that was so inappropriate. I was so shocked. I deleted it. I didn't want my child seeing oh, it. Mm -hmm. And it just, uh, like maybe an extra thing to even the, I know you're going to talk about it, but what the mental health professionals are sharing right now on social media is so fantastic. Mm -hmm. The little steps, you know, so great. that help. Uh, yeah. One thing yeah. could be, you know, what do you do if you find something on your child's whatever it is, mm -hmm. like, what are the steps, you to know, that. Yeah. first thing, don't delete it, right. you know, because that's the first thing that if there needs to be an investigation, you got to be able to prove it. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. So that's a valid point. That is a valid point. point. Because as a parent, yeah, you're shocked. I've not, I've not yeah. done that, but I thought to, yeah. you know, I don't want my child to see this. Right, yeah. right, right. That's a, So you delete valid. it, you sleep on it, you wake up and you're like, oh, shouldn't have done that yeah well even having an adult who read it is helpful yeah know, that's right that's right an adult yeah. witness is helpful too what is, what is the frequency of both the sort of bullying incidents and or cyber bullying incidents that we deal with i defer to the principals yeah so we so we're dealing i'll be honest with you we're dealing with i wouldn't say cyber bullying but we're dealing with a lot more um online interactions, whether it's through um, social media platforms, whether it's through like Snapchat or text text chains or text threads or um, Instagram or things like that. And I think more than anything, it's a, at this age, in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, it's a parent, it's a parent education piece too, about kind of understanding what their child has access to after school hours and how to police that and how to, you know, have that appropriate interaction with your child about kind of the dangers on that mm -hmm. side. There's a lot of apps that Quite frankly, you know, students you know, from 10 to 12 shouldn't have access to, but they, they do. So um, we're seeing that more and more, especially this year, more than more than other years. Oh, really? To be quite frank with you, yeah. yeah. Luckily, I'm not kidding. Yeah, yeah, I was going to ask. I, mean, I do a lot it's, more. Uh, the bullying work comes out a lot, so a lot more educating on bullying versus what it is. kind of exactly. yeah. inappropriate yeah. behavior yeah. Yeah. for students and parents. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, I think that's confusing people it is yes. Yes. one incident yeah. they call it bullying yes. right. so we'll like, say well i mean because yes. a lot of times i've more than once reached out to parents and said well because there was an allegation of bullying i'm now involved and oh no, no 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 it was just a misunderstanding between the kids so i think some of that is just parent education on that piece too and students too. So, i'll tell you one thing that um i think i've mentioned this before at school community meetings mm -hmm. um and it's a it's a 
you know, it's really a thank you to the school committee. Since we've been able to expand our mental health resources in the schools, the level of uh, inappropriate behaviors have gone way down. Um, we've been able to implement a lot of proactive things like common language in the schools, you know, the, the common symbol and uh, common expectations and responsive classroom and, um, you know, bubblegum brain versus, you know, brick brain and all of these kind of common things that are, we're teaching the kids, you know, pro-social skills. And it's been very, very helpful. And, you know, the response, the need to respond has gone down. Uh, back before we had the same number of mental health staff members, it was much, much more reactive. And um, this is, we're in a, a really a much better spot now than we were, you know, five or six years ago, for sure. Is, is this may already exist, but is, is that what sort of library of resources available to parents to access or review at home? Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's a good question. Um, like top oh, so like, all of those, all of those resources about like how how the kids are regulating themselves in school, yeah. and yeah. focusing on expected and unexpected behaviors. Those are a lot of those are terms that you know get here in the house. Sure, yeah. you don't always know exactly what they are, yeah. and there may be some value in reinforcement at home, yes. and also making my house less like a. Well, it just so up. happens that we talked about that at the wellness. Yes. Okay. Maybe. Good. So, good. Good. And we We're working on that. With okay. From the counselors in our um, the newsletter. Yes. Yeah. The counselors, and it will talk about what they're learning. And a lot of times, there'll be links there. Great. Um, and I think they have the resources on their website okay. too. Both mental health. That's a great idea, though. We should check that out yeah. and see. I mean, it might be helpful for parents, as, as you know, we've talked about yeah. it so much about how parents are thinking about, like, you know, I'm not. I should be looking at the social media stuff now because I have a 10 year old and like that's coming, right? So I should be thinking about that. But some of the other pieces, you know, like my first grader talks about like, you know, how she gets from one activity to another and gets her head in the right place. And like that would be helpful for consistency at home, probably would be helpful here too. Mm -hmm. So. Yes, like even just picking up the little phrases of that's unexpected behavior. Yes. Yes. That, I said that a lot in my house. Yeah. You know, once I yes. knew that was a term. Yes. <laughs> that's a great point. My four-year-old walks around going like this. We do this all the time yeah, in my house. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Even on work calls now with coworkers with my yeah, kids. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, yes, and I do think that's a great idea to, to, mm -hmm. to see what we can do to put those in the wellness page or somewhere where we can have those uh, things available for folks. Yeah. And even the, the teacher emails, I've noticed for the first time ever a teacher just really uh, naturally just saying, it's the end of the year, the kids are kind of acting up, I need your help, you know? Yeah. And I just remember reading it being like, ah, oh, like it got to me. And I had a conversation with my child, like, what's going on in the class? Like, you know, I think it's important for the teachers to feel comfortable to express that to the whole class. Mm -hmm. without, yes. you know, yeah. They need our help as parents. Yeah. That's right, we're a team. Yeah. So I, I had one more bullying question, maybe for the principals, but so when that allegation happens and you're investigating, what are some of the steps that are taken for, you know, the assumption that there's something going on to protect the safety of the student that is potentially a victim. So before you know what's happened, whether you, are, you haven't completed your investigation, but there's been an allegation and you're say two kids in the same class, what would be the response in the classroom or throughout the school to ensure the safety of the child? Well, it depends on the level of what the allegation is, but within the classroom seems to be changed. A lot of teachers have assigned um, spaces in line so that the students aren't necessarily near each other, assigned places in the cafeteria, you know, if they have their rug spots assigned, things like that. So you can kind of manipulate where the kids are going to be to eliminate the interactions between kids. Um, having extra informing when they go to specials, you know, if you're doing group work, make sure that these students don't work together. Um, so again, it's a huge team, you know, the, at recess, thank you. Um, and informing, we have plenty of staff out on the playground, but they need to know what they're looking for from time to time. Sure. So, and again, the mental health team, that, um, our counselors on the playground in the cafeteria in the gym so just keeping them in the loop as well 
Can you all let the, um, the principals also let the adults who are involved in the class know so that the adults are tuning into those particular students so that we we have eyes on them mm -hmm. uh, throughout the day. Okay. There are also cameras around. Are we there are, yes, yeah. yeah. And that's actually really, really, which helpful. Helpful. Really, really helpful. Really helpful. helpful. Yeah, yeah, there are. We, um, Sean can probably talk more about that. <laughs> we definitely increased them and we'll rely on Sean to pull a tape on different incidents. So um, that's definitely helpful. But really, I think the time between the bullying investigation, between when it starts and when it concludes, it's really effective communication with all staff involved, whether it's paraprofessionals or the classroom teacher, <coughs> aides that are working in the classroom, or even the bus driver. It's really, uh, it's really important. So. I'm assuming they're in the same class too. It's obvious to the teacher. Yes. Yeah. Already. Yes. 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 Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. This is the time of year when we start thinking about next year and right. getting our own, you know, personal right. lists of who we can and can't be together. I see. Any other conversation, discussion? No? This is a good add to the agenda. Any suggestions for topic for next month's meeting? I might peruse the 700 pages of policy. And <laughs> the handbook as a whole for yeah. the new member. <laughs> we'll add that. Um, hopefully that will be added in future meetings as well. Uh, different topics and people can be opened up for a conversation. It's nice to be able to do that when we can't do it otherwise. So. Yeah. Well, you know, this one, I, this one's a great one too, bullying, title bullying, because yeah. this is something that people, it's easy to get confused in the terms and forget things. So this is a great thing to, to always talk about. So even if you do an annual conversation around bullying and cyberbullying, mm -hmm. just to or tell people what's happening, mm -hmm. that could be really beneficial. True. True. Okay. Great. Thank you all for participating in that. Uh, next up is... The superintendent's report to the yes day. so um very exciting um so um mass the uh, massachusetts association of uh, school superintendents has um breaks the state down into what are called round tables where uh, different communities are put together and um we are rent them as part of the tri-county uh round table and we had our legislative breakfast in newton um a few on march 3rd they gave us fig newtons, which I don't know if you know that <laughs> they are from Newton. I did not know that. Did they, really? they are. Yep. They are. Yep. And they they are from. Yes. And you know, I asked. Actually, I sat next to Representative Vaughn, and I asked him who thought it was a good idea to put fig in a cookie, and that we spent the whole meeting thinking about that. Of all the delicious <laughs> things out there, why would you put fig? I mean, right? We're gonna get some work. It's delicious. I, I don't know. I mean, it, uh, how much better would a fig Newton be if it was chocolate? A lot. You guys have all those commercials here? Maybe a lot better. You're right. You're not lying. All right. Thank you. No lies detected. No. That's interesting. I didn't know they were from the, Well, the, the, the continuous growth and learning. Yeah. So we yes. do here. Also fake. Yes. <laughs> yes. So anyway, it was a great time. Um, and um, there, there are lots of, uh, of politicians there. Veronica was there. Uh, Representative Vaughn was there. Politician. And Senator Roush was there. Yes. And we made a pitch to really convince them that we need some state help uh, with the, the additional revenue from the tax increase on the wealthy and uh, marijuana sales and uh, online sports betting, the state's getting quite a bit of, of money. And right now, a lot of the fair share of the tax money is focused on uh, higher ed and on early childhood, not really on K to 12. However, uh, we have some significant needs now and with COVID money leaving, we are all facing um, either now or thanks to Shannon's uh, leadership for Rentham, we're okay still. We have, still have some SR money um, that we're using, but <clears throat> you know, all of us are gonna deal with that loss at some point. And so we are, this, we are appealing to the state um, politicians to say, hey, we need some help here. And specifically around a couple of things. One, um, the state allowed uh, for there to be a 14% increase in private special education tuition. 14% increase is significant. Most of those tuitions are around $100,000, um, could be more for private school. And you know the districts have to pay that for students who are placed in those schools to provide them with a free and appropriate public education. Um, <clears throat> so you can imagine if you're a school district and you've got 10, 12, 14 kids out in one of those placements and you get a 14% increase that can 
decimate your budget. Mm -hmm. um, and there was no conversation around that. That was just dictated from the state to the districts. Now that does not impact Rentham. We do not have anybody in a private special education placement, um, but still. Uh, we also talked about uh, needing to look at some adjustment to the special education circuit breaker so that we can get a higher reimbursement and a lower threshold to, to qualify for reimbursement. Um, and also a statewide commission to look at special education costs so that we get some state assistance in managing these things. It's we, all of us agree we've got to provide the students with what they need so they can they can be successful. Um, but we need some help in some of these towns like Rentham, where we have we rely heavily on the residents of town and what they pay in taxes. And you know we need a lifeline from the state. So um, I was happy to be a part of that conversation and. Uh, I will say uh, Senator Roush signed on to that at the time and Representative Vaughn uh, co-sponsored a continuation of free school meals for next year. So we had good local support from our mm -hmm. politicians. Yep. Anything I missed on that? No, I think you got it. Thank you. That was a really good meeting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, next up, I'd like to invite. Oh, uh, actually, could I pause for a second? Sure. Sorry. Yeah, sure. We should. <laughs> Uh, I should also acknowledge that you spoke. Oh, yes. Too. Was one so of Alan was one of uh, four, maybe yes. four speakers who were you asked to pre present? Yes. So, um, so it was nice. So That's it was good. nice and good job. Yeah, yes. thank you. Yeah, it was, yeah it was very, it was very informative. He had a slide and um, was, you know, owned the crowd and as yes, it does and yeah, it was um, good. It was very, it was very informational. It was really, uh, I was glad I was there in attendance. Yeah, thank you. It was a good team. It was. Um, Mm -hmm. We each had parts to do, and I had the lucky part of being able to be the one to talk about the current impact on students. So that was good. The other two superintendents after me had to deal with all the Chapter 70 formula issues. <laughs> yeah. And the opener just got to speak just to welcome yeah. people. So I got the I got the, the meat. I got the good stuff. Yep. So that was good. That was a plus for me. Well, thank you. So now I'd like to invite up our two outstanding principals, uh, Mr. Martis and Ms. Baloney, take us through where we are with our school site council survey. All right, good evening. Well, we're here today, <laughs> Kathy and I are excited to talk about the uh, WPS school council and then talk about uh, school-wide uh, updates and some important nights that we have coming up. So uh, the Rental Public School Council was uh, actually formed after the passage of Ed Reform uh, in 1993. Uh, and every, actually, actually every public school has a school council um, and, um, and here, here we, we combine the, both the Roderick and the Delaney School uh, to make one school council. And really the reasons are the school councils are really advisory boards to, uh, uh, to the principals made up of parents, teachers, and community members. Uh, we try to be reflective of the school community as a whole. Um, and they provide advice to both Kathleen and I um, in identifying educational needs, uh, student needs throughout the district. Um, and they're based on different categories. So, uh, school, uh, school climate, climate communication, uh, facilities, um, curriculum and instruction and administration. And we really monitor and develop the uh, WPS school improvement plan over a two year cycle. And if you want to pull up the next uh, sure. slide, um, these are our members of the school council. We have two Roger School teachers, uh, Katrina Bevilacqua and Paige Noonan, two Delaney school teachers, uh, Jen McMorrow and Lindsay McDonald, uh, and obviously Kathleen, uh, Laura, and myself. And we have um, par uh, four parent members, two Roderick School parents and two Delaney School parents, uh, Julie Etter, uh, Megan Osterlich, uh, Denise Ritchie, and Heather Townsend, and then a community member, uh, Linda Hall. And uh, Denise Ritchie, a Roderick School parent, she has a uh, sixth grader at Roderick and a actually a seventh grader at, K at KPMS. She is our uh, Roderick School or our uh, WPS School Council uh, co-chair with Kathleen and I. And hopefully you've all taken your school needs survey that there you received. You oh. uh, put a little <laughs> dig in right now, a little plug, not a dig, a plug. Um, <laughs> maybe a little, little bit of both. Um, but every two years, we send out a survey to gather information from the community and from the staff about all those topics that Kevin was talking about. And this year, 
Uh, we, just, we revamped the survey. We've been using a different um, generator for the last couple of years, and this year we switched it to uh, Google Form, which the community is used to. We use those all the time. And we kind of cut down on some of the questions, hoping that if it was shorter, that we'd get some more response from people. So hopefully that will help. Um, just to give us some meaty and helpful information that we can use to develop our school improvement plan, which Kevin so wisely brought with him. Um, so every two years we develop, we take a look at the survey, we look at the results and see what the needs are, and then we come up with a school improvement plan that we then share with the community as well. And then throughout the year after the, the plan has been developed, the council takes a look every couple of months to see what kind of progress we've made. So in, in our um, plan, we have our baseline data, we have people that are responsible for meeting the needs, and then we take a look at our um, indicators of progress and success, successes that we have had. So we go through that for two years, and then at the end of that cycle, we start it all over again. So right now we're in the part where we sent out the survey, we'll get the results within the next couple of weeks, and then for the rest of this school year, we'll develop the plan that we'll put in action for the 23 to 25 school years. And then over those two years, again, we'll review the plan, see what kind of progress we've made, see where else we have progress that needs to be made, um, and then start all over again. Um, but it's a great opportunity to get feedback from the community and from the staff and ways that we can work together to help improve the school. So staff and parents get the same survey? Uh, a little bit different. Okay. There's three different ones. One goes to Delaney, one goes to Roger, oh, but the staff all gets the same one. Okay. But the staff one's a little bit different than the okay. parent one, just to kind of cater to sure. their needs. Yep. And the two building ones are pretty much the same, where there might be a couple of kindergarten questions on one and a couple of sixth grade questions on the other, but otherwise they're pretty much the same. Do parents need to fill it out multiple times for multiple children? They don't. We okay. put a little disclaimer on there. If they would like to, they can. Um, oh, okay. We also put in there that at, at the end of each section there's a comments yep. box. So if there's something that you want to indicate that's different from one child to another, you can do so in the comments box. Got it. We really were trying to encourage people to do it. So <laughs> the best way we could. And you don't know how many you've received back yet. I haven't I haven't looked. Have you looked? We do. Oh, uh, we do know why you haven't looked. So. I mean, that's why we would love to put it in a plug for right. it's yeah. due on Friday the 24th. We would love to put it in a plug for the school community to uh, both at Delaney and at Roger. I think at Roger we're at like in the 50s, maybe 53, 54. But like that over to be, you know, to be much you know, higher, much higher than that. You know, 100 to 150 would be ideal. Um, you know, so we're setting on a reminder tomorrow. Yeah, I was gonna say yes. Yes. Yeah. yes, we're setting one out tomorrow. So, yeah, yeah. That's, be, tomorrow, I think I... that's okay. It's okay. But it's a reminder, yeah. I won't. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we sent a reminder to the staff as well, so we'll do that. Because the comments, we're able to um, go through both the, the parent and the staff surveys. Um, we're able to um, really look at the comments based on themes and kind of develop some kind of themes on the, on the parent side. Uh, and then we have hard data, qualitative data on the, um, on the parent side as well when they have the multiple choice questions of either agreeing and disagreeing. We compare that to the 2019 survey and the 2017 survey to see where the progress is going. Other questions about that? No. Um, so our next slide is just some upcoming events that we'd like to put in a few plugs for as well. Um, next Wednesday, March 29th at 6 p.m., we will have our kindergarten parent information night in the Gibbons Gym. That's for all incoming kindergarten parents where we'll provide an overview of the kindergarten experience for students in the Delaney, talk about the registration process, bus expectations, um, and we'll take a tour of a couple of kindergarten classrooms too. And I will let Kevin speak to the next two. Sure. Yeah. So there is a upcoming uh, for our sixth grade families. There's there's an upcoming uh, King Philip Middle School seventh grade curriculum night. It's on Tuesday, March twenty eighth, from six to seven thirty. Uh, Mrs. Cruiser, who is the principal at KPMS, um, really wants to make sure that um, a majority of our sixth grade families attend. Um, they talk about. Um, Let's see, they talk about um, the administration will share important information with uh, parents and guardians regarding the child's transition to middle school. So, a ton really of information about I will ask, you know, let me send her. Three years ago, they posted it online. Like a recording? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, I'll definitely email her to ask that. Um, and really the difference, um, and this is similar to the last couple of years, but um, they made this change uh, in the last 
probably right after COVID, is that um, our seventh, our sixth grade teachers make uh, recommendations to, uh, they don't level the seventh grade classrooms in ELA, science, and social studies. The only subject they really level is math. So there's an extended math uh, that about 20% of the students are recommended for moving up to seventh grade. And there's just a, like a, a standard math class that about 80% of our students um, are recommended for. Um, so they'll talk a little bit about that. There's been some changes on that side over the last couple of years. So that's kind of a primary focus on just the classes and um, the leveling of students. On that side. And then also uh, very excited uh, to have our Camp Borndale Parent Information Night. Now that's Thursday, uh, March 30th uh, from 6 to 7 in the Roger Cafeteria. And we have representatives from Camp Borndale that are going to come down. We have our uh, sixth grade, annual sixth grade class trip to Camp Borndale uh, on Wednesday, from Wednesday, June 7th. Our students will leave at about nine o'clock and head down to Camp Borndale in Plymouth. And they will come back on Friday, June 9th. And uh, the representatives uh, from Camp Borndale will talk about um, the upcoming activities, the medical forms the families need to uh, Need to fill out. Uh, Mrs. Monty will be there as well. She's a parent of a sixth grader, so she'll talk about um, the medical transition and any uh, necessary medications that need to be um, uh, transferred down to Camp Borndale, and then any chaperone opportunities. We're always we always need uh, chaperones, uh, ideally overnight overnight chaperones to uh, to help out in the cabins as well. So we'll talk a little bit about that. So we're very excited to get back to Camp Borndale. We did Nature's Classroom last year. And um, we're really excited. The sixth grade team and I are excited to get back to Camp Borndale uh, at the end of June. So. How long has it been since you were in Borndale? So it was 2000, the, this fall of, two, of 2020 uh, was, I'm sorry, the, of 19 was the last time. It was a very rainy week down in Plymouth. Um, but we, um, and there's been a little transition, obviously with you know, obviously with COVID, and that the owner, unfortunately, passed away. And he, there's some new leadership there, but they're they're fantastic. They're great to work with, and there's a familiarity with the you know sixth grade staff in um, both the location and the activities. Um, so it's um, it's comforting to know, and uh, I think our kids are going to have a a great uh, three days, and two nights at Camp Borndale. So. Did it used to be long? It used to be, yeah, it used to be. And there's been some reasoning. I mean, so over the last week, we shortened it. It used to be uh, four nights, five days. And uh, and that's, we found over the last, just from parent feedback, student feedback, that, uh, you know, it's, it's way too long for our sixth grade students. You know, a lot of them after COVID haven't been on a overnight trip before. Uh, we did, um, we did four nights, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, three nights, four days at uh, Nature's Classroom. And the feedback that we got from some of our uh, sixth grade families last year, our current seventh grade families, um, was that uh, it was almost like a night too long. Um, and, you know, kids are being pulled for like lacrosse tournaments or AAU basketball tournaments. Paul McCartney played at, uh, at uh, Fenway, so there were a couple of kids who were pulled for like a concert at Fenway. So there's a lot, there was definitely a lot uh, a lot of stuff kind of going on. So we feel like having uh, two nights, two concentrated nights, three concentrated days, it will be, it'll be a blessing. So um, we're excited about it. And, and um, field day is not on Friday, June 9th. The field day is on Monday <laughs> after, which is, uh, which is on, on the 13th. Yeah. We're hoping for a snow day because it would give us a little, uh, uh, yeah. So a little uh, wiggle room with a, oh, on the yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. So oh, yes. Down, yeah. So, yeah. Field, I'm sorry. Field day is the fifth. Yeah. And uh, the rain day is the. That's right. <laughs> There's so much team building that day, but it's great that it's building. It will be a great week. I think it will be a great week for our sixth graders. You know, they'll have field day on Monday. You know, we'll have an activity for them on, on Tuesday, and then they'll head off to Camp Borndale from Wednesday to Friday. So, so yes, yeah, so it's the last full day of school, which is the twelfth. Hopefully, we don't. I don't know. Thirteenth. Uh, snow day. Sorry. Yes, the last day is the thirteenth. But the last yeah. full day. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yes, yes. So usually it's the last full day of school, which is Monday the twelfth. So yeah. typically, uh, 
That's what we need. Sorry. That's what we need. So we don't have a right thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's our problem. Um, yeah. Um, so, so fine. You never know. We jammed a lot of. Uh, we definitely jammed a lot of activities because the two week uh, the week before uh, Camp Orndale was the gym show. So that so there's a lot kind of in Adam and Mark, you know, it's a lot going on on that uh, during that time. So it's going to be a lot of very, definitely very busy. But uh, we're all, we're definitely excited about Camp Orndale, and we hope um, a majority of parents attend the, the information night too. So. Thank you. Any questions? All right. Well, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. I, I just want to commend uh, Kathleen and Kevin for their uh, leadership and outreach. It's wonderful that they are trying to engage with the community. And, you know, that's a, a testament to their leadership that they are collaborating and working with us to make sure we have the best experience for our students we can. So thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. I still need to suck my throat. I apologize. <laughs> I have water. I'm going to make it. I'm still out doing basketball. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we're moving on to committee updates, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, sure. Okay, so for committee reports, um, do you want to start with KP? Aaron? Sure. Um, so we've had a lot going on at KP. Um, as I said before, Paul Zinni is retiring. Um, so we went through a very thorough process of searching for a new superintendent. Um, we had this two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, we voted on Dr. Drolet, um, who is coming from Seafunk. Um, so we had four candidates that we um, discussed that night, and it was majority. It was actually, it was, I think it was everybody voted for Dr. Drolet. Mm -hmm. um, so he will start July first. Um, he's already been. Um, kind of working a little bit with our current superintendent because we also have Dr. Mobley, who is a high school principal, um, is leaving us. So now we are in search for um, a new principal. Um, she's resigning to go to a charter school. Um, and that is it for right now for that. Um, well, so that's a lot of big change. I mean, not that this is a <clears throat> yeah. big deal, but the superintendent is gonna start and then the superintendent has to hire the principal right away? Yes, so Dr. Drolet <laughs> and Dr. And, City are working together now um, because it is going to be that you yeah, know, we want to get them in yeah. close to July 1st. It, you said Mobley is a high school. Yes, yes. a high school principal. Yep. She was wonderful. Yeah. So, but it's a Lost. great opportunity for mm. where she's going. So I think she's going to be like the executive director. Well, what so. town do you know? I don't. Okay. It's yeah. a charter school. I don't know. Yeah. She did some That's good stuff for the school. So did Paul. Yes. So it's going to be a lot of changes. Be yeah, a lot of changes yeah. for KP. Yes. Um, okay, that's KP. Yes. Update. Great. Oh, you want to move on to PTO? Sure. No, you do. My PTO. I, know. <laughs> I have a lot of um, So the PTO. Um, so this past weekend, they had the... Um, the mother-son bowling event. Um, I know I attended it with my son. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, and then they have coming up, they're doing Staff Appreciation Week. Um, the Red Sox game is May 16th. They have a family luau going for uh, pre-K first grade. That's going to be May 18th. Um, they have a... A fourth grade dance and a fifth grade dance coming up, and they're going to be doing the sixth grade yard signs. So a lot of information is going to be coming out oh, in the next wow. couple of weeks for all of those events. Um, and they're looking for volunteers um, and donations if anybody would like to for the staff appreciation coming up Great. in May. Um, and their next meeting is April 10th at I think right here, seven o'clock. <laughs> and then I can go right into the wellness committee meeting. <laughs> Oh, sure. If you want. Why not? It's kind of connected. <laughs> okay. Um, so for the wellness committee, um, I met with Kevin and some of the team members from the Roderick uh, mental health team March 1st. Um, and we dug a little deeper into what we're seeing in Roderick, what they would like to address. Um, I personally learned a lot about what they do in the classroom that I've never known. So 
we have a lot of conversation about how do we get that information out to parents mm -hmm. and kind of like those saying, how do we let them know what's being taught in the classroom yeah. um, so they can maybe do the same thing at home. Um, so we talked about having maybe parent groups and to talk about, um, you know, a lot about social media and kind of the warning signs of social media and what parents should know about it mm -hmm. um, and what they should know going into middle school since that's a big jump. So Paul and I then met with the PTO to see if they could help us because mm -hmm. yes. they have a lot of parents attending their PTO meetings. So we're going to work together with them um, and hopefully bring this to the next wellness community meeting to say, how can we kind of work together to get that information out? How can we get, you know, maybe have a parent from each grade that takes the information from the mental health team and pushes that out more towards parents. Mm -hmm. um, so I know I did a little test run with the mental health team, put um, something on probably two weeks ago, and then we shared on social media, mm -hmm. and it got a big response. Oh, yeah. great. I, great. Really, I, I know personally so I had reaction. people calling me, so, um, messaging me, yeah. asking about it, people talking about it in the community. Oh, so good. So we're hoping to kind of build off of that. So mm -hmm. the next PTO meeting in April, um, Paul and I are going to attend and kind of talk to parents there and get a feel for it. Awesome. That's great. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. Yeah, really yeah. That's the con Sorry. connect yeah. that we need, you know, yeah. that bri yeah, bridge really that gap Wonderful. there. That's excellent. Yeah, that was really good. Great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Keep up the good work. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, do you want to do West, Phil? <laughs> I was not the last West meeting, so. I was, but I forget. Sorry. <laughs> they approved grants. <laughs> we, we did. Yeah, yep. For second grade. Uh, we did. Mm -hmm. um, Katie, you were there. <laughs> Would you like to take the podium? <laughs> Very good. Very good. We talked about We uh, a little they bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Um, this was the Stephanie Levine grant, right? Second yes. grade. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was it um, Discovery Museum? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's coming back to me. There. It was. It's coming back. Yes. Yep. Um, and then they didn't continue yet with their uh, redesign of what West is because we didn't have our leader. So, um, are you the leader? He's leading us through this, process. right? He's always our leader. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So that was that was their West is trying to find the best way to move forward while supporting the school schools with. Um, their changes. You know, when West was originally founded, the schools need di had different needs, and those needs aren't necessarily the same anymore. And um, but but West has bylaws and guidelines that they're trying to abide by, so are trying to stay within those parameters while still being able to support the school um, for what they need now, because their needs before were different. So, um, and and Phil is our facilitator for that. So we've had a couple brainstorm sessions. There were some sticky notes um, and really great conversation. Yeah. Really, really That's great awesome. conversation. Yeah. Cool. yeah. 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 So, um, all right. So that's the West update. Now you can move forward. And um, well, Can't here we are. It. Here we are. <laughs> Three years later. Yeah, here we are. So, um, well, Gray. <laughs> <laughs> We started this journey together, you and I, um, three years ago, and I don't have anything written. I keep looking like I have something written, but I don't. Um, I think, you know, we had a conversation the other day over the phone, and I'm going to mention that because I think that summed it up perfectly. Okay. Because you will be missed tremendously, and for many, many reasons, but the one that sticks out to me most, and maybe you guys can chime in as well, you know, we, we come to these meetings, and we have this, like, a... Uh, I picture a square to work with, right? We have we have this agenda and we have this square that we have to work with. And Gray always turns that square into an octagon, you know, with the way that she pokes and prods and asks the questions that maybe the rest of us aren't comfortable asking or are too nervous or haven't thought of. So you just always bring that new angle. I like that. I'm so not a math person, <laughs> but boy, I sound like it right now, right? Yeah. Um, and you know, this is also, 
my first time, uh, Tracy and Aaron left when after our first year, I think, and then Eric was was in for just a quick minute, and Caitlin was there, but only <coughs> for, I think a few months as well because uh, she ended up being an, an employee here. So we've had other people certainly come and go in our time, but this is the first time that I feel like I've really had a working relationship with someone for a long period of time. So thank you, yeah, thank um, you for your time. We have a little. I'll, I'll also here. just add. Thank your family too. It's a lot of nights <laughs> yes. away, a lot of work that you've done. Listening to me. A lot of <laughs> a lot of screaming on the phone. So unnamed people on the other end of the phone. I experienced that one. Uh, but really, like to be as prepared as you are and thoughtful as you are in all the meetings shows, shows how much time you've committed. Yeah. And, and you've left, left this, this committee and this little, little district in a better, better place than you got here. And that's, that's the best testament to, to all that time. So thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's three years. It's been kind of crazy. I never expected that I would be on the school committee. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I think there was that opening with nobody on the ballot, and a friend called me up and said, "Hey, Greg, you should do it." And I remember thinking, telling her, "No way!" Like that's, and then of course, plant the seed, and there it is. And here I am on the ballot, and recently I'm on the school committee. And then the pandemic hits and I'm like, what in the world did I do? <laughs> and it was just being a part of all of this during the pandemic, I think really helped me. I, I felt lucky because you get the information right away. You know, just, it helped me trust you all. I wish I had done a better job making sure that the rest of the community had all that good information. I mean, now I'm going down a rabbit hole, but I feel like it was just, it was an incredible experience to be here during the pandemic, which hopefully will never ever happen again. Yeah. Nobody will ever experience that. Um, I wanted to continue in a certain way, kind of feeling like, okay, well now it's over, now let's get to work, but I'm not gonna lie, like it's a lot of work. Yeah. So I'm really thankful that you're all willing to keep you know, doing it. I think I've just, it's time for me to just move on. Um, but it was great, and I really enjoyed working with you, Alan. Oh, I have to say, like, we are so lucky to have you. Oh, thank you, Chris. We she are told you so she lucky. Loved you in the last week, I so. know. I <laughs> know. Our, our school is so lucky to have you. Our school is so lucky to have everybody here, all of you in administration and the teachers. And I, I think that the committee too. You all are so supportive of the school, and I just really hope that everybody knows that. Whether it's in these meetings where we're kind of talking and trying to like figure it out all in public, but even just privately speaking with each one of you. I, it's been, I've been blown away about how supportive you are. So for the teachers, for the community of making also the right decisions. And that's just been great. And I, if I didn't feel like the school was in a good hands, I'm not gonna lie. I think you all know me, I would stay, you know, but I kind of feel like it's good. <laughs> it's all taken care of. So thank you for that. We're gonna miss you, Bray. We will miss you. And this is great. Well, thank you so much. I mean, we have some flowers. Yeah, flowers as well. Yay, Ray. Can I open it later or do I open it now? No. You can open it now. You have to read it out loud because it's very Yes, you already know. You got to read it out loud. Okay, never, under, never underestimate the difference you made and the lives you touched. May you be proud of the work you do, the person you are, and the difference you make. Thank you. Uh, this is so this sweet. Is <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Yay. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, so uh, next month's meeting will be the new committee for 2023, 20, 2024-ish. 20, Ready? Right? Yes. Yes until the following April, so. Yeah. Good. I know, it's always a little bit of a bittersweet meeting. Yeah. It's always sad when people yeah. step away. Yep. I can still remember when you talked to me in the parking lot about signing on to do it, and I can still remember that. Was it in the and parking it, lot? It was outside of Delaney, and it was like a drop off or something, and I still remember it, and uh, I can't believe that was three years ago. Yeah. Time flies. Yeah, it does. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm great. It's been hard. It's been great. <laughs> what are you going to do with all your free time? I don't know. Present through 50? Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. Good. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. So tonight we are going to enter into executive session um, to conduct some contract negotiations with Dr. Cameron. Um, we will not be returning to public session after the executive session. 
but we do need to make a motion to enter into exec executive session. And because it's executive session, we need to do a roll call vote. Would you like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Two. Go ahead, you have to say that. I'll make a motion to go into executive session. Second. Okay, any discussion on that? All right, so we'll go. Gray Almeida, aye. Aaron Green, aye. Phil Jordan, aye. Veronica Gonzalez, aye. Okay, we'll adjourn the public session and enter into executive session, and we won't be returning um, after in the next school committee meeting, I believe is April 10th at 7 p.m. in the Rogers Library. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.